Hello and welcome back. Today I want to take a look at a Pendleton wool uh, flannel, uh, buffalo plaid flannel I found at a state sale. Um, it had a bunch of old stuff from the, you know, kind of 60s, 70s kind of uh, era. Um, and taking a look at it, I wasn't quite sure where it fell. I thought it was a 70s shirt at first, um, just looking at it. Um, the first clue I had was on these pockets here. Um, the pockets are at a 45, uh, not consistent with the um, pattern of the shirt. And they did that sometime in the 50s. Um, so that was kind of the first clue I took on, on what its age might be. Uh, and then, of course, the second, the biggie, uh, was the tag. Um, and here I wasn't 100% sure. Uh, so I knew that on the uh, these tags here, warranted to be a Pendleton, uh, the trademark, um, it wasn't consistent with something really old um, because it had the size. So here we go, the size. Um, that size right there told me that it was at least older than the 50s because that's when that came in. Um, and the second was it didn't say anything about made in the USA. So I was a little bit excited about that because the other tags I've seen that look similar to this have under this pure virgin wool, it always says made in the USA. Uh, <laughs> Then upon a further investigation, this little uh, ball of, of wool here, if it was from the 70s, it would have a little R for a registered trademark. Um, so this leads me to believe that this might be early 70s uh, or, some, or possibly sometime in the 60s. Um, here's our instruction tag still in there. Yeah, so again, I think this was a great find. Oh, and the other thing that uh, tipped me off was this uh, lining here. This uh, this lining here came about in the 50s, so, and the wool shirts, uh, obviously, so your neck didn't get itchy. But um, given that this tag has the um, size, pure virgin wool with no registered trademark, uh, no sight of made in the USA, I'm pretty confident that this guy is... A little bit older than I pegged it for. Uh, I initially pegged it for sometime in the 70s, you know, up through possibly the 80s, but might have got lucky here. This might be a wee bit older. Um, so if you're out there looking, um, do yourself a favor. If you find any Pendletons that don't have this uh, pocket out of 45, grab it. That is going to be something you want to grab. So that would put that before the 1950s. Um, and then obviously on this, doesn't have that size mark grab it that's that's older than the 50s um, and again if this is this looks indeed like a survivor from the 60s hey just uh, back here one quick uh, reminder here um, I, I, there's a lot of these out there uh, with people that just have misidentified it I don't think they're being malicious uh, but if you were to look on old eBay you would find a lot a lot of them saying they're 60 from the 60s um, and it would have what I was talking about there if you were curious on that um, Let's put a screenshot in here uh, uh, There is that register mark uh, and then made in the USA uh, And that's going to be a tip that that is something a lot more modern uh, 70s possibly 80s Because um, they didn't change this tag much all the way up to 92 so at 92 you get a different I think it's a one-year run you get a single tag and then um, in the 90s was a different tag. Um, but so this tag, this tag basically with a few variations around for quite a while. So it's important to uh, take a look before you list this guy. Um, you will get some irritated buyers. If you say this is from the 60s and it's from, you know, you have a Pendleton from the 80s. So um, just uh, buyer beware or seller beware. Uh, it's easy to get tripped up on this. I know I've done it. So uh, good luck out there, and as always, take, take care and see you around.